In the beginning of the movie, we meet a character named Carol. She used to be a doctor, but now she's stuck in a hospital storeroom. Her things and medicines are all over the place. Carol is desperately searching for a medicine that will keep her from falling asleep, because sleeping has serious consequences for her. Meanwhile, there are many people outside pounding on the door, trying to get in. What's going on here is confusing. To understand it all, we need to go back a few days. We go back to a few days ago, when an old airplane crashes as soon as it lands. Parts of the airplane fall into different parts of the city. In one area where a large piece of the airplane fell, many scientists wearing protective suits come to observe it. The whole area is blocked off, so regular people can't go there. When the scientists check the airplane piece, they find a small alien creature on it. This creature can live in any kind of environment, even extreme temperatures. Then the director, who was examining everything, comes out. A girl gives him a small piece of the airplane. The small alien creatures are on this piece too. When he holds it, they bite his hand and it starts bleeding. Later that night, he feels very sick and his face looks terrible. But the next morning, he's fine as if nothing happened. He calls his wife, Carol, who is the person we saw at the beginning. He wants to see his son. But Carol says he can't because they're separated. He insists he has the right to see his son because he's his father, but Carol hangs up on him. After this, Carol talks to her friend Ben, who is also a doctor. She tells Ben that her husband wants to see their son, but she doesn't want him to. Ben says he's the father and she can't stop him from seeing his son. So the next day, Carol goes to her husband's house to drop off their son. But when her son sees his dad, he's surprised. His dad doesn't have any expressions on his face, like a robot, unlike how humans usually talk, smile, or show emotions. At home, Carol hears a knock at her door. She peeks out and sees a man claiming to be a government officer. He wants to talk to her, but Carol feels uneasy. She tells him to wait and goes inside briefly. When she returns, she sees the man trying to open the door chain. She shuts the door quickly. The man then stares at her through the window with a blank face, adding to Carol's confusion. The next morning on her way to work, Carol notices more people with expressionless faces, like statues. They don't talk or interact. At the office, she searches online and finds many reports of loved ones acting strangely, just like the people she's seen. Feeling anxious, Carol seeks out her friend Ben, who's with other doctors. They explain that the crashed airplane carried alien creatures. These creatures enter human bodies, taking over their minds and actions, leaving them emotionless shells. This revelation worries Carol deeply. She rushes to her husband's house to pick up their son, but he's not there. Others in the house tell her he's gone to play at a friend's house. Carol goes to her son's room to pack his things, but when she returns downstairs, she finds herself surrounded by the people in her husband's house. Confused, she asks her husband what's happening. He tells her that when she falls asleep, she'll wake up with no memory of it. He instructs her to support them and assures her that everything else about her will remain the same. Her heart, mind, emotions, and expressions won't change like theirs. Realizing her husband is also controlled by the alien creatures, Carol panics and tries to escape, but her husband vomits green fluid on her face. She manages to clean up and flee in her car, but she encounters more people under the alien creature's influence. Trying to reverse, she crashes into another car, trapping herself. Carol runs on foot, chased by the affected people. She boards a train, where she notices everyone lacks human expressions, they're all victims of the aliens. Unsure what to do, she receives a video call from her son, who's scared because his dad took him somewhere unknown. Carol starts to cry, but a nearby person warns her not to show emotions, as it will make her a target. Carol sits quietly like the others, resembling a robot. Soon, more victims enter the train, converting others. A woman resists, causing chaos. The passengers move to the back of the train, but the converted victims attack, turning more people. Carol narrowly escapes, but outside the station, she sees more affected people and begins to mimic their robotic movements, blending in to avoid detection. In this part, it's shown that anyone showing emotions like laughing, crying, or being distressed gets taken away by the police, as they're also under the control of the alien creatures. Carol starts sweating, and a policeman warns her that they'll recognize her because of it. He reveals that he's also infected and advises her to leave. Carol returns home, shouting for her son, but he's not there. She goes to the doctor, Ben, who explains that it's a virus spreading from person to person. If someone infected sleeps, the virus takes over their brain and spreads throughout their body, 
making them prey to the aliens. They decide to watch each other to prevent anyone from sleeping. Ben suggests going to a lab 80 kilometers away for treatment, but Carol refuses to leave without her son. As they discuss, infected people arrive and search the house. Carol and the others leave quietly, blending in with the infected outside. They witness the police taking away a woman who claims she was sleeping and doesn't remember anything. This sparks a question in Carol's mind. Why wasn't she affected if she was sleeping? Carol and Ben, along with the other doctors, head to the lab, while Carol discusses her patient's situation with Ben. She wonders why her patient wasn't affected by the virus despite sleeping. After reviewing the woman's medical report, Ben learns she has a brain condition linked to chickenpox. This condition affects a small part of the brain, which explains why she wasn't affected by the virus even after sleeping. Carol realizes her son also had chickenpox, meaning he's immune to the virus too. This is why he keeps calling her, to reassure her he's okay. Ben contacts the doctor and explains the situation. The doctor confirms that the woman's mental condition also made her immune to the virus. Ben suggests using Carol's son's condition to create the antivirus instead. Carol receives a message from her son, revealing his location at his grandma's house. However, there are infected people outside, making it difficult to leave. Carol remembers her exposure to the virus from her husband and fears falling asleep, as it would allow the virus to take over her mind. Ben comes up with a plan. He dresses as a police officer and drives fast to distract the infected people, allowing Carol to slip away. Carol blends in with infected people and boards a train where all the passengers are quiet victims of the virus. After exiting the train, Carol encounters her son's friend in the station washroom, who sadly informs her that his family is gone. Carol leaves the train and finds her husband waiting for her. He takes her to his mom's infected household, where they eat together. Despite Carol's efforts to blend in, her husband and his mom don't realize she's not infected. Carol receives a call from her son, and they speak cautiously to avoid suspicion. Through their conversation, Carol learns her son's whereabouts. She reunites with him, and they share a heartfelt hug. However, her husband and his men spot them leaving and give chase. Carol and her son flee to a basement, where her husband corners them. He tries to harm their son, devoid of any emotion. In a desperate act, Carol defends her son and kills her husband. She takes her son to a hospital storeroom filled with medicines. Carol administers a medicine to her son to keep him awake, instructing him to inject it into her heart if she falls asleep. Ben calls Carol, informing her that he and her son are in a hospital storeroom. He promises to join them soon. Feeling extremely sleepy but determined not to succumb to the virus, Carol searches for a medicine to stay awake. This brings the story full circle to the opening scene, with infected people pounding on the door as Carol fights to stay awake and protect herself and her son. After staying awake for hours, Carol finally falls asleep. When her son notices, he injects the medicine into her heart, causing her to wake up immediately. Ben arrives, bringing Carol relief and happiness, but she soon realizes he's also infected. In a moment of despair, Carol confronts Ben, reminding him of his desire for world peace. She believes the virus has achieved this by eliminating emotions and conflict. With a heavy heart, she opens the door, allowing the infected people to enter. Carol tearfully worries about becoming infected, but her focus turns to protecting her son. Ben reveals that those immune to the virus have no place in their new world. Determined to save her son, Carol shoots and eliminates the infected, including Ben who she injures. Carol flees with her son in a car, pursued by others infected with the virus. A collision causes Carol to faint momentarily. Upon regaining consciousness, she finds their car surrounded by infected people. Breaking through the window, Carol gathers her strength and drives away, determined to protect her son from the chaos around them. Carol receives a call from the doctor at the lab, urgently needing her son's help to create the vaccine. She discloses their location, and soon the doctor arrives via helicopter, guiding Carol and her son to the rooftop. Despite being pursued by infected people, they reach the roof safely. The doctor whisks them away in the helicopter to the lab, where Carol's son contributes his DNA and blood to create the vaccine. With the vaccine's development, infected individuals start to recover one by one. Gradually, everyone returns to normal, with no memory of their actions while infected. Among the recovered is Ben, who eventually marries Carol and becomes a close friend to her son, finding solace in their newfound family. With the virus defeated and harmony restored, the movie concludes, leaving everyone in a state of happiness and peace.